believe should be done, which was not done by the State Board of Canvassers, the Wayne County Board of Canvassers, is a detailed forensic audit, um, because that's what, a, that's what a canvas is. It's an internal audit, essentially, is what it comes down to. And I wanted them to perform, and I still would like a performance of a detailed forensic audit. And as we identified, I mean, we talk about Antrim County. This isn't just a Wayne County issue. We don't know how many other counties uh, this may have impacted that that flew under the radar. It didn't have a Bill Bailey highlighting what was going on. Um, so um, I believe you need a full forensic audit. I, I have n I, I, the key question is they haven't demonstrated chain of custody on any of the, on, on any of the key election data. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm concerned. You can't just go off and fix it with a recount of the ballot. That's downstream. If you've already got this whole chain of custody broken by the, at the uh, qualified voter file level and at the poll book level, what good's a recount gonna do? Well, uh, I, I think that it's pretty telling that the Trump campaign did not request a recount in Michigan. It seems pretty clear to me that they know that a recount would um, mess up their current strategy, which is just to throw up a bunch of smoke and mirrors. And it's particularly telling also that you here, sir, in committee, you have continued to repeat information about Antrim County. And then when you were corrected with the testimony that this committee heard, you just go back and repeat the same old misconstrued statements about what happened in Antrim County. So forgive me if it's difficult after reading these lawsuits and listening to your testimony to, to, to understand even what you're talking about. We need some evidence, we need some proof. All we've got here are conjecture and musings by former Senator Kolbeck. All right, well, I'll tell you, um, I, Upstream, we talk about the recount issue in particular. You want to talk about some of the upstream concerns that have never been refuted. We got 8.1 million registered voters here in the state of Michigan. Uh, the only problem with that is demographic analysis shows that more than 300,000 and as high as 600,000 of those folks should not be on the voter rolls. So you want to go off and do a recount, you've already got a broken link right up at the top that says there's over 300,000 people that should not even be eligible to vote in the state of Michigan you've got some serious problems when you even, the Antrim County and everything downstream of it, frankly, is, is uh, interesting side notes once you realize that somebody's broke, uh, breached the top link of the chain of custody. So how can you be confident in anything downstream? Senator Santana. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you allowing me first to sit at your table today, um, committee members, and as the only detritor up here, um, today, I have a couple questions for you, Senator Colback. Sure. Um, on Thursday, October 29th, the city clerk hosted a challengers conference where Chris Thomas and Daniel Baxter gave a detailed overview of the process. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand, they provided a thorough explanation of all three steps um, of the orientation process by ballot recording information in the e um, poll book, tabulating ballots through the ICC high-speed tabulators, and the adjudication process where the overvoted blank ballots and the write-in ballots were reviewed by teams composed of one Republican as well as one Democrat. Did anyone attend the conference? Um, to best of my knowledge, we've been asking for when that would actually occur, and uh, there's a gentleman here, at, he might be here, uh, Phil O'Halloran. Phil, are you here? Phil can talk to that um, because we were specifically re making repeated requests for information related to events like that. And I'll, I'll, I'll let Phil fill in the blanks associated with that, but I was very concerned. I can tell you if I was notified about that meeting, I would have been there. Well, it seems like, you know, these things would have been addressed at that meeting and that meeting yeah, was open to everyone. So mm -hmm. um, it seems that, you know, maybe your committee should have had some more communication with the city, but the city also provided that information as well. Yeah, like I said, we'll let Phil testify, but believe me, there were attempts to do that. And I can tell you COVID was used as an excuse to push off meetings, to push off uh, attendance of different things. There's a whole sequence of emails that I was working with folks to try to identify specifically when things like that would happen. We we're concerned about the use of a reliant, um, the Reliance system, Reliance scanning system to verify ballot signatures, for example. Um, so it, the Reliance system, scan, you know, when you want to go off and the clerk's office will validate that the voter 
uh, signature on the ballot envelope matches the one that we have in the qualified voter file. And if it doesn't, then they're not a qualified voter, right? Um, so you can't go off and, and count their ballot. We wanted to know what was going on with that reliance system. How was it being calibrated? Because if you calibrate that at a, at a um, very permissive level, if you will, you're not going to filter out any bad signatures. And, and we also know that that reliant voting system is based on eight-point signature technology that was over two decades old. So it's not the latest and greatest you'll see with, uh, with banking systems that are used today. So believe me, we were, we were trying to get access to that type of information for quite a while before um, uh, before the election.